All right, so this is a Vizio 55 inch flat screen. Uh, just to kind of show you how cheap some of these are made. So this board right here, uh, someone threw this away and every time someone throws one away, I'll check it, see if it works. Everything worked. I had been using it for like two weeks and all of a sudden the screen was black. And I shined a light on the front of the screen and I could see the picture. So that tells me that the backlight was out and so I did some uh, research on some forums and a lot of people were saying just to replace all three of these boards. Well, this is the uh, backlight engine and they're telling me that these 16 pin connectors right here, it plugs into this other board, which is very, very uh, uncommon. And they say that these aren't soldered very well. So pulled this out, check these right here. Uh, they are I don't know if I can get that, but they're soldered pretty well. So, they're pretty solid. I can't move them or anything. But this pin right here, check this out. This is uh, supposed to be soldered. And I'm not using any pressure. So, we're going to take this board apart, flip it over, and look at the solder joints. And then I'm going to resolder them once I realize that they're cracked, which I already know they are. So we're going to do that and see if that fixes it. Uh, shouldn't have any more problems, but uh, just shows you how cheap uh, TVs are made nowadays when you could have some nice, nice connectors like this. Uh, but all they did was just try to plug the boards together to make it more compact, less cables, which it's not a bad idea. They just... Sometimes you use cheap solder, and Vizios are horrible about this. Um, this is a really nice TV, and apparently nothing's wrong with anything on it, so, besides that. So, uh, we'll flip this over and see what we're working with. Okay, so I got my camera placed a little better on this. Uh, this is the light engine board. I don't know if I explained that, but... Uh, this pin is basically a plugging into the power supply board. So we have 16 pins here. You can see all the cracks in the solder joints. Um, this can be caused by, uh, of course, cheap pins, cheap solder, not enough solder. Um, but yeah, this will definitely cut off the power to all the backlights that provide light to the TV. So if your TV is black and it looks like it's coming on or you have sound still, um, if you shine a flashlight at the screen and you can see the picture, um, then it's pretty well probably your backlight. Um, could be the backlight board. It could be something as stupid simple as this. Um, you can definitely see that this would not allow power through. And it could cause a lot of heat too. So, um, got my handy dandy soldering iron here. Um... But it's just something to check before you throw away a, a good TV that may have some minor problems. Whether you're not a TV mechanic or anything like that. You don't always have to be super good with electronics to do stuff like this. But you do have to be cautious with some things that you don't know about. Um, definitely do your research. I don't have the best of soldering iron right now. I do need to get a new one. My tr tips are atrocious. It's like we got two pins bridged together right there. So I'm going to use what's called solder wick. This is just a strip of copper. And I do need to cut this. All right. And what we do is we lay this down and it heats up the solder and actually soaks it up in the weave. You can see it going up through there. Look at that. No more solder there. I think we still got a little bit left over on that one. Alright. We can continue with our horrible solder job here. Being sure to add a healthy dose of solder to each one.
And sometimes you can just drag it across and it'll keep itself from bridging together. Kind of like I did there. Um, it does look a little sloppy. Try to clean some of these up to the best of my abilities. There we go. Um, from looking at my camera right there, that's not too bad. It should be acceptable. This cable is totally solid. Now I'm moving the board and it is not moving. So, got a few pieces that are a little bigger. This one right here could be touched up just a tad. That looks good. That looks good. I don't see anything that's touching, so I see a little blob right here, which I can't even see with my own eyes. I can see because my camera zooms in so ridiculously far. It's crazy. This camera has a 30 times zoom, um, and the quality is pretty crazy. I'm fascinated by the simple things, but... Um, See how close I can get in here. That's pretty wild from a cell phone. Used to, used to we would use um, telescopes or magnifying glasses to see stuff like this, but I can just set my phone right here and mount it to something, and I instantly see that I have a bridge right here. So look at that. I couldn't even see that with my own eyes, even if my face was close enough. And I have pretty good vision, so... Um, I think that should work. We're going to try it out. Um, I'll show you one more cool thing here. Get this zoomed back out. That just shows how tiny this connector is. Sorry about that, I shut my phone off, so. This is uh, what I was using to clamp my phone down and hold my phone so I could see it, kind of like a magnifying glass. Uh, this is 3D printed with a twin screw uh, vice clamp here. These little pieces here are replaceable, so I can put in different types of uh, things I want to vi vice clamp down. I usually use this to put uh, circuit boards in here to solder on, and then of course these are tapered. Uh, holes so I can bolt it into a uh, desk or a workbench. There's a uh, one right there too. I'm sure you can see it from here. But uh, this worm drive works really smooth. I'm just using my finger and it spins very freely. This thing will actually bend a pickle jar lid. So pretty cool. But anyways, you can see how small this connector is. I can get zoomed into it here. Look at that. Um, not the best solder job, but it will be far better than what was on it. And we'll plug it in and see if she works. Okay, so we got the board back in here. All the cables are plugged up. Uh, you just want to make sure all the screws are tightened down good. Our connector is nice and strong. Um, like I said, make sure all your power connectors are good. Check any components. Uh, you never know when there might be a component that has a bad solder job. Capacitor, um stuff like that uh capacitors you can check to see if any of the tops are puffed up on them which usually results in a bad capacitor but i've still seen some work even though they're in rough shape so while we've got it apart you might as well check for stuff like that um but i think with this one uh that connector is going to be our case of failure and i think everything else should be pretty good everything looks good um not many heat marks so this thing was getting hot so those connectors barely touching will definitely cause that um and just the fact that this is a thin tv it's gonna get hot not much room for the air to go so i'm gonna test this before we bolt the back up be careful not to push it up against anything while you test it and uh we'll see how it goes all right so we got the tv mounted that was quite a workout to put on the mount by myself, but uh, you can see my computer's on. We're gonna turn the TV on, see if she works. Fingers crossed. Light is on, I don't know if you can see it. 
TV's coming on, that's good. A lot of fingerprints. I'll have to clean that up after a while, but there we go. Success. And that took probably like five cents of solder. Um, and about 30, 40 minutes, so can't complain with that. Everything looks good. Um, this is my motion racing simulator. Um, probably soon I'll do a tour on my whole setup. I've got a lot of wire management to do, but got the 3090 running back here. Very, very nice machine. We got all of our amplifiers down here. I've got them pushed back right now. And then my motion amplifier over there. Lots of wires. So, got a lot to work on. Get everything set up right. And soon we'll be racing. We got our green screen back here. That's very roughly put together. So, uh, I was going to get everything set up tonight to start streaming and racing but the tv crapped out so kind of glad it happened tonight when i had time to take it apart and figure out what was wrong with it luckily it was something super simple so uh i kind of had that in the back of my mind that something was wrong with it but it just didn't know what i didn't know if it was just a bad port or usually people throw them out for a reason but um this was a simple fix and a lot of times they are sometimes they aren't but you never know until you try so don't throw away them nice flat screen TVs. Um, you never know if they can be fixed. So it's hard to find people to work on them. Um, but usually it can be worth it if it's something cheap. So thanks for watching.